Welcome back. We have a few more minutes with John Furlong, CEO of Vanock. Uh, a big question I think a lot of Vancouverites and Canadians have is money. This is an expensive venture. One, are you going to balance the books? And two, what is it going to cost me, the average Canadian? What, 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 is, what is an average Canadian going to pay in taxes for having the privilege of having hosted the Olympics? Well, uh, our budget will be balanced, and the vast uh, majority of the dollars in our budget is private sector. Our budget was $1.75 billion, of which about 92% was private sector. So there's very little um, government money or taxpayer money in the Olympic Games, in the organization of the Games. What the taxpayers were involved in were venues, which you now own. Uh, infrastructure, which was built for far beyond the needs of the games, right. which you now own, and so that's the really, line, yeah, like all that. of that has got very little to do with us. We weren't involved in constructing that, but but the venues we own and will be here for our kids to grow up in and use. But the actual operations of the games, when we retire the business and uh, we close up at the end of the year. Uh, we will uh, balance the books and it'll be a, a good story in spite of, I think, predictions by some that it wouldn't be. Mm -hmm. um, Corporate Canada did a fantastic job, supported the games uh, on a per capita basis better than any country in the world before for mm -hmm. the Winter Olympics. Uh, people came in huge numbers. They, it was hard to get a ticket to the games. So all of that worked quite well. And where our partners, governments made investments, they made them in for things like the opening ceremony so we could do a better show. and. Uh, and we did, they made some investments in the torch relay so we could spread out more mm -hmm. and let the entire country engage. But outside of that, government investments in the actual staging of the games were not, uh, were relatively modest against what the private sector So you don't invested. think my taxes are going to go up because well, of... Well, why would they? Yeah. And uh, like we have, we have, uh, yeah, we haven't got any uh, asset to government for funding for it. As I said, the games will be balanced, and uh, the investments that we see from the government have been known for years, and that's, those are the only ones we will ever acquire. Well, let me ask you about the Paralympic Games, mm -hmm. because the, the, the Paralympic Games, for better or worse, are often the sort of stepchild of, of the Olympics. They come afterwards. The, the excitement and the glory of the Olympics have passed. There's almost sort of a fatigue a little bit that's set in after the Olympics, understandably the people who, who worked on it and people who were spectators. You know, we had two weeks of, of excitement. And then here's another thing. Um, do, you, do you, I don't know how much control you have over that, but do you regret that the Paralympics come after the Olympics in such a sort of right on the heels? Uh, do they lose some of the, or, or maybe do they sort of basking in the glory of it, they, they get more attention? Well, it's staged when it's staged because that's the agreement that's the way, between that's the, the IOC and yeah. the IPC. But it doesn't have to be. I mean, the Commonwealth Games has, it, has integrated Paralympic. Yeah. And, well, and, and the Olympic difficulty sports. is if we if it if it wasn't close, it would have cost dramatically more money to do this because mm -hmm. we would have had to dismantle the company and do it right. again some other time. Right, right. So unless you do it well out in front, it would be very difficult to do. It's done the way it's done for a reason, and there's been lots of suggestions that they should be integrated. It would cost quite a bit more money to do that, and the organizations are not ready for that right. yet. The thing is, though, that when you look back, the Paralympics were declared by Philip Craven to be the best ever. So they were a pretty great event. Mm -hmm. The venues were full. We had Canadian team performances. We had, we had amazing results. Yeah. The crowds had a great time. So for the country, it was a great experience, and Canada has got a great reputation at um, providing for and dealing with and supporting people with disabilities. The Paralympic Games were, were a fantastic event for this country and our team as they came third of the Games, yeah. that was their target. Uh, we had uh, Lauren Wollstonecroft won five gold medals unprecedented in Paralympic history at the Winter I mean, so many great things happened. Um, but, but there's no perfect answer to that question. Yeah. I mean, there's a, that's a very complex uh, situation, and uh, sometime in the future it's possible that it may get delivered a little bit differently. Uh, but it isn't as simple as it looks from the outside. Right. Well, the, um, the Russians, of course, are hosting the next Winter Olympics. Um, the President and, and Prime Minister of Russia did not come to the closing ceremonies here, and they're, they've the Russians did not perform well. There's been a lot of concern over um, how they're going to pull it off. Are you talking to them at all? Are you yes. involved in yes. advising them? 
our team will go to Sochi in June, and we will that will be the almost the final uh, command performance mm -hmm. from Vanok in that we will pass on our knowledge and our expertise and our experience fully to the Russians in a for, in a formal education transfer program. There'll be about three dozen of us will go there, um, hosted by the Russians, and there it'll be their chance to get inside our project and understand the good, the bad, the indifferent, everything you would ever want to know. Mm -hmm. And we'll do our best to help them and give them a fighting chance to do a good job. They have a very different project than ours. Their infrastructure uh, requirements are massive compared yeah. to what we had in Vancouver, multiple times more than we had to deal with here. And it's a well, very it's different place. political issues mm -hmm. that, that you you know, major political issues they have to deal with. Ethnic Very different issues. environment, but it, but it's the case everywhere in the world. I mean, this is the difficulty in comparing games. Yeah. I mean, Canada is is has, has very little in common with some of the most recent countries, really. Um, <coughs> other, you know, other than you know, the games ultimately kind of look the same on television, right. but behind the scenes, the environment is quite different. And. And in Russia, it will be very different. And but you know what? They'll do a great job, and it'll be a great games, and they'll learn something and grow, and it'll be great for the country. And it'll, I'm optimistic. We'll have to see. They'll have to work hard for it. That at the end, that the Russian public will look back and say, "Wow, this was a great thing we did together." I mean, what's great for us is that this touched every Canadian. It's hard to find a Canadian that wasn't touched in some way by the games. So hopefully it'll be a result like that for them well, too. As you know, rumors on the internet are spreading saying, you know, Russia's not gonna be able to pull this off. Vancouver's gonna have to bail them out. Um, I, I just answer for the record. Are, the answer to those two questions are no and no. They will deliver it. They'll do a great job and it's just idle talk. It's not helpful. Yeah. They'll do a great job and we and won't I can't be putting imagine, it on. You, you can imagine doing we won't it We'll be putting again. it on. We've done our job and we're moving on. So. Well, moving on, in terms of moving on, uh, past, uh, Folks in your in your role have gone on to public office. Mitt Romney, probably most famously, uh, headed up Salt Lake um, in, in the U.S. and went on to become Ma governor of Massachusetts and ran for president and, and a potential contender in the next presidential election. Um, do you what do you see next for you? Do you have any political aspirations? No, zero. You don't want to be I mayor. Mean, you don't want to no, be MP. I, it's not. That's not in my. DNA. I mean, you you've run a multi-billion-dollar enterprise. Not many people can say that. What do you do with that skill set? Well, I've found plenty to do. I'm not <laughs> worried so much about that. I am you know, wanting to make sure that we retire the enterprise beautifully and that the public is happy at the end of the year and so on. But I, I will go on and find something new to do. But you know, the way I see the first of all, I'm not interested in running for public office. I, I never have been. It's not in me to, to do that. But you know, if I'm ever asked by the country or the province to help with something again, I've obviously I think it's the responsibility of every citizen to pitch in. And you know, it's it's not fair to finger point and not be prepared to say I'll help when I when I when I'm needed. So I would be always prepared to do that. But I'm going to go on and find a new career and do something interesting and challenging, and hopefully and. And I'm looking forward to that. I have no idea what it will be. For the most part, right now, I've been sort of saying no or wait, and um, and I'm sort of and we're not finished. We have two months right. of hard work to to properly retire Vanok. Uh, we're down to a couple hundred people from about fifty thousand, so we're almost there. Um, well, and um, we're, we're enjoying this little phase we're in right now. <laughs> good luck wrapping it up, and uh, congratulations Thank again. Thank you. Um, coming up next on the standard, Jennifer Gardy is often described as the nerd girl of science. She'll answer our questions about the search for the God particle and what happens when faith, politics, and science collide. That's next. Stay tuned. <laughs>